Hello, this is Jeff Hicks, and this is a demo for my Windows Server 2008 PowerShell training course. I hope you enjoy it. Now, creating a process is really no big deal. You run a command and the process starts. However, there may be times where you want to launch a process, say a program, or do something on a remote computer. So here's how we can do that with PowerShell. There is the start process commandlet, which works fine locally. And unfortunately, it does not have a dash computer name parameter, but it does have some nice parameters that we might want to use to create our process. So we could use that with PowerShell remoting to do something against a remote machine, or we can use WMI and the invoke WMI method commandlet, again, on the Win32 process object. So here's some examples. Locally, interactively, I could do start process notepad. Notepad would pop up and I'd have that process run it. Well, let's say I want to start a process on a remote computer or several remote computers. So I'm going to use start process in a script block. In this case, I'm going to specify a program called myapp.exe in my tools directory on, in this case, the database server and the exchange server in the Chicago office. That tool, that process, myapp.exe, is designed to just basically run in the background. It's not going to interact at all with any logged on users. The only way you would see it is if you look to get process on those machines. I'm going to use the dash pass through parameter for start process because I want to be able to see the process objects that come back so I can grab the IDs, for example. So that's one way to do it. Or I could use WMI and in this case, this is done locally. I could specify computer names as well. Um, invoke WMI method, the path, which is the path to the WMI object, it went through to process object, the create method, the argument list is what I want to create. So I'm going to create the myapp.exe process. In this case, on the local machine, I could add the computer name parameters and again specify one or more remote computer names. Same event would happen. I have processes starting, but well, in this case, I'm using WMI. So let's go into PowerShell and let me demonstrate some of these techniques for dealing with processes on our servers. PowerShell offers a number of commandlets that we can use to work with or control processes. Let's take a look at them using get command. And for the noun, we'll look at process. All right, so there we are. Uh, you can ignore debug process. That's for something other than uh, process objects. So let's look at start process. This allows us to start, as the synopsis shows you, one or more processes on a local computer. You specify the path to the command or whatever it is. If you need to specify arguments for it, there's a dash argument list. You can specify credentials. You can control whether you want the window hidden or how you want to handle standard in or standard out. So a lot of interesting ways we can use start process. Let's go ahead and try it out here. Let's do start process and we're going to create a calculator process. Works pretty well. Now I could have just as well started calc at the prompt and would have also started a process, but there may be times, let me get my window back here. We're going to start process again. And this time I'm going to use the dash pass through. If I had saved this to a variable, I would then have a reference to the process object for this particular instance of calculator. Could come in handy if I'm trying to check some status of, the pro of that process, or perhaps I want to kill the process. Sometimes you want to start a process and maybe wait for it to finish before your script or your command carries on. Here's how that looks like. Uh, we can use start process. I'm going to go ahead and start notepad. There's a wait parameter, all right? Notepad started. Now, if you notice in my PowerShell window, my prompt has not come back. I will not get my PowerShell prompt back and no other PowerShell commands will execute until this notepad session or process ends. I close it, you can see my prompt comes back. There's another commandlet, there's a similar thing called wait process which will wait for process to be stopped before accepting any more input. So I could take, for example, my calculator processes and pipe them to wait process. All right, my prompt is not there. I'm not going to get PowerShell back until, and that's since I close both of these, because it's, it's 
get process is looking for any calculator process. So as long as it finds one, I'm not going to get my prompt back. So we'll close this other one. Wait process is up. You have no more. And it returns the prompt to me. So let's turn our attention now to doing this, creating a process on a remote computer. Uh, for this, let's first try looking using WMI. Now I'm going to create a script block because I'm going to reuse this. Let me finish typing a lot here with invoke WMI method. Okay, so I'm going to create on Chicago FP01 a new process called notepad.exe. And the argument is the notepad.exe, and that name, that create method, is for the Win32 process class. Okay, so I've got that created. I'm going to go ahead and invoke that script lock. All right, and there's a return value, so that started notepad on the remote computer and would run for as long as it would need to run or until that scope of that command ended. In fact, let's run get process for notepad on that computer and there you can see the process is in fact still running. Which takes us kind of to the next thing, stopping or killing a process. So we'll look at stop process. Again, you specify by ID or by name. I'm going to go ahead and test this out locally first. Let's start an instance of Notepad. I can do get process Notepad and pipe this to stop process. Now, stop process has this handy dash what if. So, if I had wanted to, this is what it would have done. So, let's go ahead and do it for real. This time, I'm going to use the aliases uh, PS for get process and kill is the alias for stop process. And there, Notepad is now gone. A little trickier remotely, let's use WMI and get that Notepad process that's running on the Chicago FP01. All right, so there's that process object. That process object has a method called terminate. So we're going to pipe that object to invoke WMI method specifying the terminate. Again, because we're using invoke WMI method, we can take advantage of dash what if. So if I had run that without what if, it would have killed that method. But since I have a reference to that object directly, we can just run the terminate method. Remember to include the parentheses. Return value of zero means it was successful. Let me go ahead and start a new process of notepad again. Rerun that script lock. And let's do this again with invoke command and use basically the same thing that we did locally, get process notepad, pipe it to kill. This time I'm also going to have it uh, pass through the object so I can see that actually returned a process object. And we do it on FP01. Takes it a moment. And there we go. Get process has found notepad, piped it to stop process, all on Chicago FP01 and terminated that. So now I should have no instances of notepad running on the file and print server. Not saying you you'll be doing a lot of these things, but there are ways that you can start and kill processes remotely. Uh, again, definitely something you want to test out in a non-production environment. So that kind of wraps up the little demo here. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.